Hello out there in YouTube land. How y'all doing? Hi everyone. <laughs> uh, I said y'all. Did you? I did, and I used it in context. We don't say y'all in Alberta unless. No. Oh, you saw that comment? Yeah, because I, I used it. You know, in a in in my mind, when I say y'all, I'm being like a Bugs Bunny character, but. Yeah. Use many picture. many places are you know they say y'all so yeah we just kind of I know I, I don't know why you said it I don't know but I did anyway hello uh, welcome to today's live feed incidentally if you are not catching this feed live and you want to watch our live feeds or get notified uh, you have to subscribe that's the whole point of subscribing so everybody who's on if you're not subscribed subscribe subscribe and then that way you'll get notified when videos come out well and you when get notified if you put the little bell icon there's a little bell on there next to subscribe yes if you click on that then it'll notify you hopefully some people don't get their notifications <laughs> so yeah subscribe and then click turn the little bell on and that way you'll get uh notices when we're gonna hey, be on. matthew um so today a couple things we're gonna walk you through what is happening in the business but also try and answer some questions because i think the last live feed i did I was at the store and stuff was happening and, um, you know, I didn't get a chance to answer any questions for you guys. So we're going to try and do a little Q&A back and forth and, um, yeah, cover off a few topics. So without further ado, and Melissa is uh, looking down at the screen right now because uh, she and uh, <laughs> Checking out comments. Matthew were trying to look at comments and, and uh, Melissa will be making sure that uh, I try and catch any uh, super chats that come up and uh, answer questions as they arrive. So um, this past week has been really busy. Like busier than usual, I'd and say. And hot. And warm. It's been really <laughs> Not busy. Warm, hot. It's like our first hot week of the year. <laughs> yeah, but people on the southern part of the U.S. are probably like, "You think that's hot?" Or it's Australia. Hot for us. It's yeah. hot for us. Yeah. It it's, has been. Today was not as hot as yesterday, but it's like plus 35 degrees Celsius. What did it taste? That's like 90 something. You double it and then add 30, or was it? I don't know. It's for yeah, Fahrenheit. Per, yeah, it's about 30, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, I think. Anyway, it's been for us. It's warm for Canadians. That's pretty warm. Uh, <laughs> so we're, we're looking forward to, um, you know, maybe it cooling off a little bit. My poor store, it was so warm in there the other day that I had to run out with my mom and we picked up an air conditioner, like a little portable one. And the thing is just struggling to keep up right now. Um, but it makes it bearable. If I let it run overnight, by the time I get it in the morning, it's not too bad. Uh, so uh, we got a little air conditioner box set up in the store. I was worried that all of my candy and chocolate would be melted into a giant pool. I have no clue how it's not. We it's could have charged admission to let the kids come and swim around in the melted candy all over the floor. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I feel like that's against so many rules. <laughs> Probably. Wasn't, Abigail would be right in there. Wasn't there like um, in The Simpsons like a candy truck that spilt over and uh, there was a bunch of uh, like blasting caps makes sense but oh it was Uncle Cur Colonel Simpson's Homer or Colonel Homer's uh, sugar or something he was scooping up anyway that'd be me with the candy melted all over the floor there'd be like bits of antique debris stuck in there uh, MP thank you so much the northeast of US has been having a heat wave for a month 90 to 95 degrees every day I gotta yeah. see what that is and we're not used to having this kind of weather no. oh retro replay how are you guys doing uh, Retro Replay, uh, I visited them when I was out in uh, Ontario. We stopped by the shop. I bought a watch from him and a uh, very cool store. Nice to see you guys on and thanks for the two bucks. <laughs> I've been thinking about you guys. Hope your business is doing well. If, uh, you know, if you're in the Ontario area, go by and check them out. They're it's the cool same shop. as us. 90 to 95 is between 33 and 35. That's kind of what we're having as well. Oh, yeah. I feel you. That's, it's hot. <laughs> it's been warm. <laughs> but we're landlocked. So, I mean, we have rivers and lakes, but it's not as humid as most places um so let's uh talk about what's happened this past week well the really good news uh, that you probably have heard from other live feeds is that we were able to overcome the challenge we had with the city they decided not to charge us a million dollars for a fire hydrant uh, or seven hundred fifty thousand dollars plus tax basically it may as well just be a million bucks because that's what it would come out to pretty well uh, we don't have to do that now. And yeah. it only took me having to go to council three or four times and write letters and, um, you know, go to the news and everything. But eventually, they did come around. Now, um, Retro said they had to close because of no sales. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's a difference, I think, between, um, you know, pushing for something that you believe in uh, when you think something is wrong and just trying to do something that maybe, like getting a discount, getting a further discount in the store and complaining to the manager is one thing. Um, when a city tries to charge you an exorbitant fee that is unfair, I think that's worthy of, um, I wouldn't say fighting, but yes, fighting a little bit. Well, when you know that something is not right, 
Um, and really, at the end of the day, that should have been the city's job, not our job. So really, at the end, because if they were saying that it wasn't safe, that wouldn't be safe for our building that was there. Yeah. So I uh, think when you know something's <laughs> off, you know. Aaron, I see you asking about cookbooks. Um, I probably do have old cookbooks, but we'll save some of the Q&A for a little bit later on. So stick with us. I'll get to a spot where there's q and I'll try and answer uh, questions as much as I can. We'll try and stay on topic as best we can. So we'll chat back and forth about the building. I'll try and answer questions about the building, and then we'll get into general Q&A near, near the latter part. Um, so the, <laughs> the we got approval, uh, and then we did find a way to... Um, you know, get a, approval to build. So now basically the next step is I'm trying to get uh, a person to come and put the infrastructure in. If I can book that, then I can get the actual concrete pad board. If the actual, con is the dog locked outside? We, I heard Chewy barking. That means that he is uh, wandering. You're gonna have to bring him for an on-camera appearance because everybody's gonna be wondering what Chewy's up to. Yeah. We have, um, this is slightly off topic, but we yeah. think we have bees underneath our deck and Chewie has been making friends with them or and or eating them or their honey. I'm not sure what he's up to, but he's up to something under the deck. He's like making them chase him. Yeah, so oh. Melissa is right now chasing the dog around trying to pick him up and he thinks it's a game. Anyway, I'll talk about buildings. <laughs> um, basically, uh, everything's kind of on hold until we get the... Um, uh, the foundation poured, and then we can look at getting the building up. The background noise that you hear is a fan because, as we mentioned, it's very warm. There's Chewy. We don't have air conditioning. The, Chewy looks like he has no idea what's going on. He was like, I, I called him and he thought it was a game and just thought, it, you know, he'd let me chase him around the table. Yeah, you gotta get his head up there, though, so people can see him. There he is. Hey, Chewy, look. Yeah. All that barking. You better say hello. We, we know we don't normally need air conditioning here. Um, no, because it's windy. Yeah. <laughs> Funny thing about the truck, so. Uh, I don't know if Hans and Zenobia are watching. They helped me for some time to get that up on the patio. And that's where I was going to display it and put flowers in the back. And uh, this is what happened today. I got the truck up on the patio and somebody saw it there and said they needed to buy it. And I said, it's not really for sale. Of course, you put it on display on the front. I didn't even hear this story yet. Yeah. And then they said, I'll give you cash right now. And he offered like almost three and a half times what I had into it. So... The truck disappeared today. Uh, what? Yeah, after all that, getting on the patio oh and everything. My gosh. Well, we needed the money from. I, I bought want all of you. Who here is actually surprised that the truck only lasted that long? Well, Not we me. had it for a while. We built it back <laughs> for it. We put it up on the anyway. You put it out and it was gone. But you don't. When you get oh somebody, you know, begging to buy something off you for like three times the profit, you're kind of silly if you're in a business, which I am, to not sell it. Anyway, that'll give us more access to. Uh, um, to have room on the patio for construction. It'll give us more space for seating once we get the building put up. So anyway. Is it gone already or is it still there waiting? No, for it's gone and I have to tell you what happened. Um, the truck gets put on the patio. I'm like, there, it's finally there, it's done. And the guy's like, that's a nice truck. I want to buy it right now. And I'm like, nah, it's not really for sale. Then he gave me an offer and I'm like, okay, well maybe I'd sell it for that. Then he showed up and I thought, well, this guy, people say stuff like that all the time and then they never show up. Yeah. Well, he showed up this morning with a truck and trailer. And he, this is what happened. <laughs> we have it on the front and it's a one way street in front of our road. Oh. And so he backed his truck up and blocked the road. And I said, you guys can't block the road. You're gonna have to pull the truck into the parking lot. And then, you know, you can load it up there. And it's he's, a one way. He's like, oh, we'll just put it on the back. It'll just take a couple minutes. Well, a couple minutes is probably all it actually took. But a couple minutes of people sitting in their cars like honking and being mad was not good times. I had to oh, walk up man. and down the street and I chatted with everybody at their window and I said, you know, so sorry, there's loading something. Everybody was generally pretty good. Uh, there was one person who was in a Maserati. They were, they looked a little annoyed, but they were nice. Uh, and I tried to wave and be courteous, but it wasn't me loading the truck. It was these people that bought the truck that was blocking the road. But still, you feel... On you still, of our company, yeah, yeah. And when you see them pulling it off of your yard, they probably think it's you. They probably think it's me that's the one blocking the road. Anyway, I felt bad. So as soon as I got loaded up, I'm like, guys, you got to pull off the road. Go, go, go. And then I was like waving through like I was a traffic cop and waving everybody. And there's no room to go around either. Like it's a one lane, like there's a spot for parking and then one lane. And then the next lane is a bike lane and it has a cement partition. So they can't even drive up and around. 
Oh yeah. my gosh. Somebody said I should have handed out ice cream. But then I'd be like, I got ice cream. They'd be like, I'm lactose intolerant. And no, then they'd, they'd slam get the it door. all over their Maserati and then you'd be in trouble. Yeah. Anyway, if you're the person driving the Maserati, thank you for being so patient today. And I the did rest, say a nice car. if they were like in a rush, that would be my luck. I'd be like, okay, I've got five minutes. And then something like that would be, I'm like, no, <laughs> Give no. them some cameras. So he says, give them some cameras. See? We should have waited until Halloween and been like, trick or treat. And they're like, there's a camera. Off you go. <laughs> if, did you see if Bob was on? I think somebody was talking to him. Oh, it is Bob. Bob the Bottle Man's birthday today. Today is his birthday. It's a triple B. Yep. Bob Bottle Man birthday. Or BBMB. I don't know. That probably means something on the internet that you shouldn't look up. But it's Bob the Bottle <laughs> Man's birthday. Um, so, Bob, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Uh, I won't, you can share how old you are if you want to share. Um, but it's it's a milestone birthday for him. Yeah. So, 40. No. He's... <laughs> Oh, oh, no, people are guessing. They, oh. I think they know, but wow. I know. Uh, he said it on Facebook. I heard this joke in it. Uh, yeah, he said, you're never supposed to guess somebody's age, but you can guess their weight. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's not good either. Uh, 50 years young. Uh, and yeah, so he came, hung out at the store, and, uh, you know, we gave him a birthday soda because that's what he likes. And uh, yeah, we kind of hung out and chatted for a bit. Um, I won't give away. I bought something kind of cool for the store today. I know what it is. Melissa knows and Bob knows, but I'm not. Rhymes with, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Rhymes with, I'm in trouble. Rhymes with trouble, it could be just what I I don't even know how much it was. I just know it came to the store. You know, that reminds me of a comment. Somebody said, we only ever see you buying things. How can you only buy things? Well, obviously, we're a store. We have to sell things. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to buy things. It's just I, the cycle of how it works. If you are wondering what sort of things I keep for myself. Just me and the kids and the well, dog. No, well, okay, <laughs> things. You're not a thing. Okay. Of course the family. Um, but uh, I like old vehicles, if you haven't noticed. I love driving an old car. It makes people happy. They smile. I smile. Anytime I drive an old vehicle, it just puts a smile on everybody's face, and I think that's worthwhile. So I like old vehicles. Um and I like little toy old vehicles, especially ones that are all gadgety and do stuff. I said gadgety. There was this Corgi James Bond car where he shoots. Wait, did he shoot out the roof and he shot rockets? Well, well I accidentally touched something and it shot a little rocket out in the middle of the living room. I didn't even know that it did that. And then Alexander, I mean, <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> That was, I think, uh, the... Was, I found it, but I it think took that was me a the, long time. Oh, thank you, Amanda Stevenson. She sent us $5. Thank you. Um, that wasn't the James Bond car. You have... Melissa has a, a challenge... It's a corgi. I, I, I thought it was the Fab One, the pink car. That no, you, it was silver. I well, shot the rocket No, out. it doesn't shoot a rocket. I shot... Was a guy... Did the guy come out of the roof? The guy comes out well, of the roof. Well, something shot out. And well, that's possible. Melissa, just, she sees something cool, and she's like, oh, what's this dude? She pokes it, and generally something breaks, falls off, or shoots, and she's like, oh, did I do that? He says to me. <laughs> you turn into Urkel. Did so, I do that? Seriously, there was a car when we used to have our old store, and we sold more die-cast cars and stuff like that. There was a car, and it was a collectible, and I touched the windshield, and I swear to you, it just snapped off. And Alexander's like, why do you have to be so rough? I'm like, I barely touched it, and I took another one. I barely touched it. I broke that one off, too. I'm like, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Two windshields. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I collect little toy cars, especially um, Shuko cars that are German. They're wind up. If you ever have one sitting around your house and you want to sell it to me, keep me in mind because those things make me super happy. They're like little German wind up cars and they have little gear shifters in them and you can put them in reverse and forward and sometimes you can whistle and they'll turn. Or um, there's a, another company called Primetta, which you wind it up and it does like a little racetrack thing. If it's a wind up car, and it does cool stuff I'm interested, or if it's a Corgi or a Dinky toy and it's a movie-related car, that's of interest to me. I try and collect those mint in box. Anyway, that's the stuff that I'm into. That I think that's really cool. And they're small, they fit in a showcase. I don't take up the whole house with things because I already have the whole garage full of my stuff. And, and a store. Yeah, one of our subscribers <laughs> came into the, uh, a friend of ours, well, end subscriber and local customer came in and he said, um, my wife was so mad she could never park in the garage. And I said, I don't think Melissa's ever parked in the garage. No, I did very briefly. I think one time I parked in the garage. It was horribly inconvenient because there's stuff in the garage. And you have to pull so far up. Nah. You know what? I think I'm going to get a car starter, though. Because going out and freezing my butt off to start my car. I mean, oh, first world problems. <laughs> Maybe we should do that this year. We'll get your remote car starter. Yeah. Just in time for you to switch out your car for a new one. I seriously think I'm going to get the exact same vehicle I have with less problems 
and less kilometers. Yeah. Hers has been pretty good, though. She's no, got a it's Volvo. Like the, it's a pretty good You know, vehicle. we've had quite a few cars, and the safest vehicle for our weather in winter by far has been the Volvo XC90. All the way. Yep. I, it's, it's a good vehicle. It is Congrats insanely in. good. And I have ice tires. I mean. Anyway. So, um, oh, hey, Mike. Thank you very much. Yeah, Mike Gary, uh, Gary Epi. I, I hope I said that right. I think it's. Mike sent us, uh, I should have done an unboxing of it. Mike, that was an amazingly fun box. I never know, if you send me a box like that again, he sent, sometimes I get these little mystery boxes sent to the store, and then I never know if you guys want me to open them on camera or not. If you do, I'll do an unboxing mystery box unboxing. I might not do it live in case, you know, it's like, you know, somebody sent their hamster wrapped in a towel or something. <laughs> oh, okay, that's a weird thing to say. A cow yes. hoof, I was going to say. A cow hoof, guess. yeah. Anyway. Yeah, something but disturbing. Anyways, yeah. Mike sent me this box, and what was inside? All kinds of old toys, like old Corgi and Matchbox and stuff like that. And he, there was actually one in there that I didn't have. It was the Man from Uncle Car from Corgi, and it was the white version. It was a little chipped up, but that's fine. I'm not complaining. The man sent it to me for free, so I have it proudly on display in my showcase. And uh, it's actually upstairs right now. Uh, I was just going to say, I think he means our house showcase. Yeah, it's here. We have a showcase in our house. <laughs> Yeah, but, but I mean, we do have kids, and we do have me who breaks windshields off. So I mean, I have uh, to keep those things safe, not from the kids. Uh, a, a lot of people are asking about the half sign that Hans found under the. Okay. Yes. Um, the Coca Cola sign. That, uh, if you you didn't see it on my channel because Hans and Zenovia were kind enough to clear the garbage before I had a chance to look at the sign too closely, but. Um, I know what it was. It wasn't that old. No. My store was a store up until the late 80s, early 90s, and that was probably a repair that they did on the porch around that time. Uh, the reason I know that is it said, like, I think slush ATM, yeah, stuff like that. It, it wasn't terribly, terribly old. It was wood, and it was cut in half, and I don't think they ever did find the rest of the sign. So we didn't keep it, um, you know. But a lot of people asked about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't hang on to it because it wasn't necessarily super collectible, and it was. I should have kept it as just a memento, but I don't know. Can you know. imagine if you kept everything just? For I did. Um, they did give me a Coke sign when we when we moved into the store. We got one. Um, Andrew hello says hello. Andrew. Yeah, hope to visit the store. So I'm gonna ever get any antique typewriters. All the time. In fact, I think I have four or five in my garage right now, Andrew, that I haven't taken into the store yet. I've been dealing with cameras, as you can imagine uh managing that collection and so for those of you who've been asking about cameras i guess um i should probably wrap up i'll talk about cameras for a second okay. then i'll wrap up the store build i i have to make sure to get back on track about the store build and what's happening there uh but cameras bought a thousand cameras all the sort of uh common or um less desirable ones i wholesaled out to another antique dealer and i kept all the really cool ones um for the store or you know they're, they're going to go to the shop. So I've been putting them out over the last week or so. We've sold a few, um, and we still have a lot more to go. But I must have, I want to say, 200 folding cameras, <laughs> like the antique folding cameras. So I have quite the impressive display. If you want to see a picture of what it looks like, go to our Instagram at Curiosity Inc. Y-E-G, and you'll scroll, scroll down, and you can see that there. Uh, and, yeah, we have spy cameras. We've got uh, beautiful Art Deco cameras. All kinds of neat stuff came in. But... To get back to the store build, uh, to prepare for the building going in, Hans and Zenovia came. They did a video on their channel, which is helping Hans, if you want to see what they were up to. And they ripped off the old edition, and they put this very cute kind of arts and craftsy, cottagey sort of looking entrance uh, made of recycled materials where, the, where it was. And I just think it looks very nice and very happy, and I love the job that they did. So thank you very much, Hans and Zenovia. I think it's lovely. Uh, Mary O, thank you very much. She sent us $5, but did not ask us a question, so we'll just say thank you. Um, let's see. Um, oh, yeah. My my Volvo is 2009, I think, right? No, yours is an 07. Are you sure? Yeah. It's the newest vehicle we have, and it's an 07. <laughs> when, when I'm, I'm driving a 1956 car all day, every day. I'm driving a 56 Buick all the time. Yeah, it's fine. You get used to it. The cattle, it's, a, it's kind of... Um, for me, it's a step up in design, but a step down from the Cadillac because the Cadillac was a very floaty, luxurious car that you felt like you could just drive with your pinky finger. Did you say what you bought in the States? Is it Tennessee? The... Ten no, I'm not telling anybody what I bought. Ooh, it's a good thing I asked. No. <laughs> yes. 
spoiler alert queen for those of you that watch our or go on our facebook you'll probably notice that i was looking for somebody to haul a vehicle from tennessee to montana um thank you to uh one of our viewers uh tom i believe his name was uh, if i got that wrong i apologize who sent me a link over to a fellow who within um i had a company booked and the, the last three four weeks they've done nothing and that's basically for canada that's like half the summer is gone now he's like oh i'll, I'll get you somebody i'll get you and he didn't and so i talked to this person that he recommended he had me a shipper the next day so the car is getting picked up tomorrow morning and um it's going to be at montana on wednesday and then hopefully crossing the border so hopefully i'll be able to do an unveiling video of what the heck did alex buy uh and if you know don't say there's a couple of customers that come in the store that know because i needed to let me know before this i what you didn't say it, did <laughs> no you? but okay. it was close oh there you heard a, me tippity tap yeah no i think bob and bob and dave uh oh yeah know. look he said i know what you bought in the u.s i imagine that's how you sound dave <laughs> Hello, <laughs> why did why did you make dave sound like he's taunting me i know what you bought in and i met US. nitrous diecast dave's wife today did who you? is sean's mom and sean is the one who's doing the designs for our building look at what a tight-knit community are we are i am pretty loyal to folks though if one of if one of our viewers has some good advice or if they know somebody who can help out the business in this case uh, dave knew knew his uh stepson oh, you would think he would know his stepson he's <laughs> like this guy i never met him before anyway <laughs> uh dave's stepson not some random steps some but the one he knows um learned a couple fun facts uh a that he was a drafter and we hired him to do our design and he's a wonderfully nice person has been very very helpful so sco hall drafting if you're in edmonton uh there i'll give you a plug go and sign up for more sco hall drafting what do they do well they'll do everything how do they do it very well da -da 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 -da. <laughs> uh anyway i learned <laughs> did you know that sean he was in the video we did where we were doing the designs and he, he came on, he was talking about his company and I think he was a little bit nervous to be on camera. Nice guy anyway. He, it's weird going on camera when you're not used to it. Fun fact about him, he is bold, and Dave, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, Sean has bowled four or five perfect bowling games. Five, that means he got nothing but strikes the entire game. What? Yeah. He's like a professional bowler. Like he tried out for Team Canada or something crazy. So, yeah, I I told him, <laughs> I said, I've bolted almost uh, a perfect, oh, he said he bolted four perfect games. I've bolted uh, almost a couple perfect games, you know, where you don't get any points and you just get nothing but gutter balls. <laughs> uh, I wish I was joking. But we all have our own skills. We all have our own things. We just bowl for fun. like the, I think It's not it's fun when you're doing that poorly. It's not fun. I you turn into a big pouty baby, like, get a little stupid gutter ball. <laughs> you almost wanted to put up the bumper so you feel like you accomplish something <laughs> anyway clearly i need practice you wouldn't know that i played baseball for many many years so what does that have to do with bowling that, that i have you at all in okay bowling. i don't have bowling <laughs> as a sport but i do have baseball as a sport so there's that not sean that works at our store uh sean uh our drafter yeah. the the person who helped me we come have up a with lot the of blueprints. sean's <laughs> yeah yeah anyway so yeah he's a bowler and um yeah so sean next time you're through this store you'll have to i don't know Bring in a trophy. Prove it. <laughs> I believe you. Wow. Oh, my God. I do believe him. Because why would... That's not a... You... I mean, if somebody's like, oh, I can bench like 550, you'd be like, okay. That's like a uh, Mazda Miata. But if he's like, I bowled four perfect games, you're like, well, that seems unlikely to be able to prove, but it seems not, not something you wouldn't brag about. You know, you could brag and say that you were a professional lawn bowler, too. Like, uh, lawn bowling, that's my game. That's my jam. What position in baseball? Oh, I was a pitcher. Uh, pitcher in third base. Because I had a rocket for an arm, that's why. I could throw the ball very fast and consistent. Uh, my my specialty pitch was the sinking fastball. But then Is that where you just throw it right at your feet? No, it's when you <laughs> hold your fingers on the seams and... Anyway, it, when you throw we it, it does this, and then it drops right at the plate. When we play, if we are going to go out and catch, if he throws like that to me, there's going to be trouble. Like, there's no... Mm -mm. I could, by, by the time I was done, and I played uh, AAA baseball um, up till high school, and then um, I, did, I did try out for a semi-professional team at one point. That didn't happen. I ended up wanting to go to school to work in the film industry. Now look at me, Ma. I'm on the television. Chris... <laughs> Uh, said cricket is like baseball. Uh, I mean, pitchers in cricket are called bowlers. So there. There we I go. Said, but, uh, pitch, uh, baseball wouldn't help you in bowling. He told me. 
Oh, look, there's yeah. Bob. I yeah. played football. Yeah. Um, so, yes. Happy birthday, Bob. <laughs> oh, Dave says that Sean got a perfect bowling game ring. I imagine you get a special jacket with, like, a bunch of pins knocked over and it'd say, like, kingpin on the back and you'd have to flip your collar up and be like, check it out. You want to, you got to <laughs> oh ask God, kingpin dude. if you're allowed in this party. <laughs> this jam ain't happening unless the kingpin says so. <laughs> That's what you got to do. <laughs> so Sean's got to be, like, just walk around. I wonder if he walks around with the ring. Or if you were, like, a really tough boulder and then you, you got into bowling fights, you know, how people probably bowl and get into fights in the parking lot after it would leave, like, a little impression of his ring. What is that from? That you're thinking of. Oh, it's something. I can't remember. It's there, something there's a with show Jim for sure. Carrey. Oh, somebody sent five New Zealand dollars for some treats for Chewy. Thanks. He loves watch. Oh, thank you. His fan Watson. The yeah. Spoodle. What's a Spoodle? A poodle and a. Uh, spark plug. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> or a bark plug. I'm going to say bark. a spaniel. Uh, Big Lebowski, maybe. I don't know. There's a lot of. You know, the more, the older I get, the more I admire the dude's <laughs> apparel. Just like walking around in like a t-shirt and shorts and a house coat. Like, <laughs> they, I'm the dude. You know, it was just such a, you know, he was so laid back in that movie. Anyway. Um, Ace Ventura, that's what it is. Oh yeah, yeah. They had they, the uh, foot that. Josh is calling. Josh was trying to call. <laughs> He's clearly not watching our live feed. Uh, I'll have to call him back. Um, oh yeah, dude. Yeah, not the dude, dude. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> um, I stopped playing baseball because nobody would play catch with me anymore. I used to play with my dad, but uh, then he wasn't able to, to catch the fastballs. And I remember I went to go play ah. catch with my friend Jason, and he caught one, and then it scared him, and he never caught with me again. But when, when you're not playing professionally, and you don't have somebody who's an actual catcher, people don't like you throwing a ball at them as hard as you physically can. Yeah. There's a reason that there'll be trouble if he ever throws a ball like that again at me. I, I am not a good catcher. <laughs> I, I remember distinctly, my dad bought me a VHS, I'm old folks. I had a VHS. <laughs> how do you think that's going to make like most of No, but this is going to make me feel. sound really old. It was a VHS on how to pitch and it was taught by, I think it was Ted Williams and Mickey Mantle. Uh, anyway, they had these really old school like baseball moves that they were doing on the tape. It was, uh, I wonder what ever happened to that. I, my, I wonder if my mom has it at home somewhere. It was, uh, I remember one of the rules, Mickey Mantle came on, he's like, kids, there's an important rule. You should never swing the ball bat in the house. I'm like, well, that's an important rule. <laughs> Clearly, <laughs> insight into Mickey Mantle's life that being the big number seven and being a home run hitter and being a, the pride of the Yankees, he clearly had kids that were swinging a baseball bat in his house and probably annoyed the heck out of him. <laughs> Mickey Mantle had nice stuff that got ruined from his children. First thing on that tape, rule number one. And he's old at this time. This is like in the 80s. Yeah. Never swing the ball bat in the house. Yep. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> Alexandria said, stop it. Since I'm older than you and my birthday is coming up, we are not old. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, that was that was fun. So I remember watching that and there was all kinds of techniques on how to rock on the... isn't that old. <laughs> um, well, I mean, he's not getting any older. Matthew said, I told Josh you were live, Alex. Josh, yeah. he's probably like, what was I thinking about Alex? I must need to give him a call. <laughs> Phoning someone when you know they're alive and you have their cell phone and Bold you're doing move. it from your phone. Bold move. That's that's worse than photobombing, Josh. <laughs> I'm so going to get him back. Um, anyway, uh, many people might not have known that I really enjoy baseball, and uh, that was super fun. Uh, my dad batted against Satchel Page once. That's pretty cool. Hopefully intentionally. And Satchel Page just wasn't like, hurling baseballs at him, <laughs> you know, un unknowingly. That's really cool. That's a cool story. I'm guessing your dad, uh, Michael, was your dad a professional baseball player? Maybe it'll come. I don't know why I was waiting for a response. Like, I, I can't hear him I, I didn't know why you stopped. I thought maybe you were. Yeah. I don't know, because you think that you're having, like, a normal conversation with real people, but then you can hear them. Anyway. Yeah. It's we'll, funny. We'll we were see. talking about that the other day, and sometimes I remember I said, no, no, when they're talking. I thought, wait a minute. I have no clue what your voices sound like. <laughs> Yeah. That's what my brain tells me I do. <laughs> oh. So this is what's going on right now in, in my world. Um, this the, We'll come to the Rolls Royce update in right, right away because I haven't had an update, a video update in a while. Um, oh, somebody said, who's the guy who painted the Coca-Cola sign? Uh, Dave Dunbar at Ace Fine Lines in Edmonton. Um, he does uh, sign painting, but he also does pinstriping. He's very well known in the hot rod industry around here for doing pinstriping, and he'll do sign painting and that kind of stuff too. So... Um, this, these are my days.
first thing in the morning, I have to go and restock on like candy and soda and stuff like that for the store. Then I usually have to drop stuff off at the auction. Then I typically try and fit in a pick going to someone's house to buying things. Then I go open the store. I put out the stuff that I bought. I organize it. I try and answer as many emails as I can. If I'm delayed getting back, it's because it, it's tough to stay on top of that. I'm trying to uh, get a building put up. So we're dealing with permits from the city, getting designs made, getting parts of the building torn down. Um, we have the Rolls Royce, which is getting, um, I'm trying to coordinate getting that done. So basically following up with the upholster, following up with the shop, trying to order parts. Uh, we have a car, something in Tennessee. That I don't even is, have to say anything. We have a, we have, we have, um, wow. we have an Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile <laughs> coming from wow. Tennessee. Wow, 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 that wow. ought to throw them off the track. <laughs> oh uh, gosh. we have a vehicle. We have something coming from Tennessee. Well, I didn't say what well, type I'm it was. I it was you and not me. Well, I didn't say what it was. Well, I think they all know anyways. Anyway. Tennessee, one of our viewers in Tennessee, they helped us find something. And I will give, I will give full credit to them and we'll talk about it when the time is right because I want to do a secret special unveiling. Uh, but trying to get that vehicle moved. Um, and, I, you know, I can't even think of half the things that are going on. It's, um, it's just been really, really crazy around here. And, um, you know, boy. Um, so Willow's dream, I'm just going to go back to her really quick. I was trying to watch that live of Josh's, so that makes a lot of sense. So him and Ashley were doing a uh, all cooped up, and they do the live from the chicken, from the chicken coop. coop. Yeah. And you phoned him while he was trying to do that live. It kept cutting out. I actually left because it wouldn't stop cutting out. So. Oh, I phoned so him you, during that. Yeah, you phoned him during that, so he's getting you back. I wonder what I was phoning him about. I don't know. Well, I would like to put Josh and Dakota back to work, and Hans back to work building my little building, but we we just got the new plans approved, and the new plans for the building are going to incorporate. Um, <laughs> They're, they're going to incorporate um, a bathroom and um, actually a sprinkler system and stuff like that. Uh, ironically, the, the vehicle is coming from Kodak. And I just so happen to have bought like 700 Kodak cameras. It's like I had a thing for cameras. First, a vehicle is in Kodak and I got to get it shipped up to Canada. And then I end up buying cameras. Maybe I secretly have a camera thing. Maybe I'm all about secretly, cameras. Secretly, this isn't the first collection of cameras you've bought. Was the last collection from the same guy? Like the, no, different oh. person. Lately, I've been getting calls. Um, no, I'm not growing a beard and mustache. I just didn't shave today. So His that'll, grows fast. that'll be going. Yeah, that's like a day's growth. I have to shave every day. Like that happens. Um, the calls. <laughs> this is how busy I've been. I haven't even had time to shave yet. They're guessing what you bought. I bet it's a station wagon. I bet it's a... Yeah. Uh, so here is the, um, the, the lowdown on... Oh, yeah. And we had a magazine, which is called Avenue Magazine, came and they did a photo shoot. And they did this um, sort of uh, like Indiana Jones kind of theme. And I had to like hold a sword and hang off a ladder and stuff. And anyways, I said, oh, I can't wait to see those. Pictures. I said, can I get a copy of these pictures? These will be like the best family photos ever to have on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> like that was your dad. And it's like some guy hanging off a ladder with a sword, like swinging from a library bookcase. <laughs> those will be the best pictures for my kids to see when I'm older. Anyway, uh, so they came and they staged two really cool looking pictures. And um, I had to do this whole Indiana Jones kind of thing because that's what they, they wanted to do for that. Um, so we had a couple uh, photo shoots to do and things, which is kind of fun. You know, it's different. We, we, get to, we get to do some fun stuff around the shop and it's going to be some good advertising. So it'll come out in September. So for those of you that uh, are in the Alberta area and get Avenue Magazine, it'll be coming out then. Uh, I think Dennis, I wish it was VW2, like the old one. <laughs> I love old Volkswagen. Okay, here's the thing. One of our customers came in, truth be told, the vehicle that I bought will still not be a good winter vehicle. So eventually there's going to be a need for me to buy some kind of vehicle I can drive in winter. Yeah. So this is what safe. happens today. The whole truck thing, truck is getting hauled out. I'm blocking traffic. I'm all stressed out. Up pulls a customer and I'm like, oh, hey, how's it going? I actually, uh, no, uh, we were unloading something, something mysterious that you'll have to oh wait and see goodness. on a new video. I don't even know you guys, seriously. Something mysterious. the same time as you. No, you know, I told you. Did you? Yeah, but don't say it. Cause oh. you'll be like, oh, right. The, and, and then she'll like break the Hold on, let's just proverbial go back windshield off of my toy. that broke the proverbial. I didn't say what type of vehicle it was. I said a vehicle. But now we know it's Tennessee. not a horse. Maybe it's a horse with wheels. Maybe. Maybe it's Mr. Ed. It's not a Mustang. <laughs> yeah. Funky Aardvark. Really pleased to see you guys going forward in Smallville. Oh, thank you so much, Funky Aardvark. Um, okay. Where was I Where was I going before I got sidetracked? Uh, person pulled up. You were on the Oh, yeah, yeah. Person pulls up and he watches our YouTube channel. 
And he said, uh, you seem like a guy that knows people. And I'm like, I am a guy who knows people. He said, I've got a 68 Land Rover and I kind of need to get some work done to it. Do you know somebody? And uh, yes, of course I know people. And I said, well, that's funny. That's a cool vehicle. I actually wouldn't mind finding a Land Rover. But I said, but I want to get a Safari. He's like, well, that's what I have. And then I said, you want to sell it? And then he said, not really. So he didn't want to sell it to me. But if you're watching, um, mystery customer whose name I have on my cell phone but won't say on the air in case <laughs> I get in trouble. Actually, better yet, if your wife is watching, wouldn't you just love to get rid of that vehicle that's not running and taking up space in your Wait driveway? No, he knows how this goes. <laughs> yeah, I know that you're unhappy with it, and I know that you don't want to spend the money restoring it. Let this guy do it so I can drive it in winter. By the way, I shouldn't act so excited about it. I should be like, eh, take it off your hands, I guess. But really, I'm like, no! Ah! I'd have the worst poker face. They'd like deal the cards and I'd be like all normal. And then I'd get something good. I'd be like, oh, look at this. I can't play poker. Plus, they don't like squeaky voices like that at the poker table. Alexander's easy to figure out what he's going to do in cards. I whoop him in crazy eights. <laughs> I can beat you when I actually have a really good hand. But anyway, so uh, then he wrote me back and he's like, here's some pictures of my Land Rover Safari. I don't know if he's taunting me or if he's debating selling it or what. But um, <laughs> nothing like finding the perfect car and hearing it's not for sale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think an old Safari Land Rover would make a good winter picking vehicle because they're big. I have like a bus worth of children. I have three children. It seats ten. I actually usually have a bus worth of. Yeah, she kids drives my, people. It's a ten my passenger. My, yeah. The Land Rover is a 10 passenger. You could drive everybody to school in the morning. Yeah, but this is 1968. That was a 10 passenger in 68, which means probably there's no seatbelts in it. Meant, yeah, you just stack children or you all lie flat and pile them in like cordwood. Or, you know, two or three children hanging onto the roof for that funky tire that goes on the hood. Some kid sits on that like a toilet seat. Woo! Down the highway. Things were different back in the old days. I mean, I think everybody here, well, some of you here, not everybody, um, I remember, you know, lying in the back window of the car or lying on the back seat reading Archie comics and my dad slamming on the brakes and doing that thing where you like, you, <laughs> you, you sausage roll into the footwell and your arms get trapped because you were reading and so you roll, blah, and then you're in the footwell and you're like trying to dislocate your shoulders <laughs> to get back up on the seat. Anyway, my kids don't have that memory because we kept them safe. Well, I'm sure the memories that they're gonna have and tell their kids, yeah. they'll be like, oh my gosh, Thank you very much, Michael. I saw we missed a super chat from you. Oh, thank you, Michael. All-American high school drafted in the military, not pro ball, received Medal of Honor. Oh, that's very cool. Very, very cool story, Michael. Um, I had uh, one of my uncles was a professional baseball player, and he played with, I, this is like a long time ago. I think he played with Onus Wagner, and like he was way back then. My grandpa's oldest brother played professional ball. Not, not, but he played, played professional Canadian baseball and they used to do tournaments up here. The turn of the century, they'd cross the border and they'd play tournament games and stuff. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of history crossing the border. So I have a lot of baseball in the family. My grandpa, my grandpa, George would watch baseball games and his hearing was going and he refused to put in his hearing aid. So what he would do is he turned the volume up on the TV to the point where there was no bars left. You know, you watch the bars go up on the, on the TV on the volume and then it hits an end and he's still pushing the button, like hoping there's mystery bars to come out of the TV. <laughs> anyway, so we'd go and visit and be like, whoa, grandpa, what's going on? <laughs> and I'm just watching the ball game. And he ate an apple on a knife. Like he would yeah. have, and if my sister watches this later on because she didn't have a chance to meet our grandpa, um, he used to like have an apple skewered on a knife and he'd like I'll bite it and sometimes he'd like scrape it off and eat well, it off the knife. I've seen him like eat it like that before. Like I've had it. Yeah, he'd eat it with a knife. Yeah. And uh, I'm, <laughs> I remember one time my grandma was annoyed. He was sitting there in the chair and the baseball game was cranked up and it was probably a really hot day and she'd been, my grandma used to bake pies like crazy. Like there was just two of them that lived in the house. We'd go to visit and how many pies? She'd have like seven pies made. We got apple, cherry, blueberry, like lemon meringue. Grandma, what are you making nine pies for? There's only like three <laughs> of us coming over to visit. My dad never complained about the pie quantity at the house. But my grandpa was sitting in the chair one day and I remember this, he was uh, sitting and he had like a, an easy chair and he had one of those pole lamps that extended up to the ceiling with the little lamps coming off, which is why when I bought one in a couple of videos ago, I knew exactly what it was because I'd seen it a million oh, times. Yeah. He had the senior citizen phone with the giant buttons on it. Anyway, he's sitting there and he said, <laughs> 
He said, Hazel, why don't you? Because her name was ha her name was actually Mary, but they called her Hazel, which is her middle name. I didn't know that. Her name was Mary. Yeah, I but she went Hazel by Hazel. Mary. No, Mary Hazel. But anyway, he said, Hazel, why don't you go and get me an apple? You know how old men are condescending sometimes and ask for things when they should just get off their, up off their chair and go get it themselves. So my grandma goes into the kitchen after what was likely an entire day of baking pies. <laughs> she grabs an apple off the counter and chucks it as fast and as hard as she could right at his head. And he just, he had like his reflex, he just went, and he caught it. He said, oh, thanks. And he starts eating it, like not even noticing that she was probably trying to take his head off with an apple. <laughs> oh, wow. uh, yes. That was probably a marital issue that I thought was funny at the time. But hey, <laughs> oh my gosh. he got his apple and he got it a lot faster than he expected. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, maybe oh, I got my throwing water, arm. You guys. Water. I got my throwing arm from my grandma, apparently. But yeah, so my grandpa was always watching baseball games anytime we go over there at full volume. <laughs> and if he that. answered a phone call, the volume was equally loud on the phone. It was like speakerphone, but not. It was just coming through the regular receiver, and it'd be as loud as it possibly could be. And I could hear entire conversations. Uh, yep. Anyway, but my grandpa was into old cars. It's Phil, not Todd. He said, you got the name wrong. I give the shipper. Oh, Phil. Tom. Phil. Oh, there was another person who gave a name of a shipper, too. Um, I think his name was Tom Moody or something. But I'll check. Phil, thank you for you your Todd lead as well. Earlier. Yeah, I will, I will go back and check and see. Uh, okay. So... We are, uh, where are we now? What are we talking about? Rolls Royce. Okay, I'm going to talk about the Rolls Royce a little bit. <laughs> my uncle knocked my grandma out with a frozen candy bar. Man, I would feel so guilty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the accidental, you know, injuries that we sustain. Usually with us around our house, it's whacking our toes on the edge of a table or a chair leg. We have, um, we have a chair in our house that was my great-grandfather's chair. But it is a chair, it's a toe killer. That yeah, chair is a toe killer. Like the one we have? Yeah. That's a crazy chair, first off. It's a, it doesn't lean back. It like slides back. It's a stationary recliner, so the feet stay on the ground, but it actually tilts back. And it's the reason why I have it is that it was I in the farm. Yeah, it was in the farmhouse <laughs> back in the 20s and 30s. That was his chair that after working in a, a tough day in the field, and my, my great-grandfather used to operate um, steam tractors. So you can imagine that wasn't a real easy job cranking on a steam tractor and work plowing fields and those things. So he'd get back from being on the field with the steam tractor and he'd sit in that chair. That was his chair. He passed away at a young age. He was, I think, like in his 50s when he passed on. So when I look at that chair, I imagine my ancestors, you know, sitting in there and, um, you know, being able to relax. But now I know the true story of the chair is that many of my ancestors have probably broken toes on it for like 80 years worth of toes getting broken on that chair. And that tradition has continued. That's probably why my, my, my great uncle who had it, or my second, great second cousin, <laughs> I don't know. I had a relative who got it and he didn't want it, probably because he broke all his toes on it. Dave said, that's like the mini bike in your store. I tripped over twice. <laughs> I moved the mini bike now, Dave. You know, if you trip on something enough, maybe somebody will buy it, hopefully. Yeah, we have that little Fuji motorcycle. It's a motorcycle that folds up into a suitcase you can carry around if you have Arnold Schwarzenegger's arm because it still weighs like, you know, 80 or 90 pounds to be carrying on your arm is kind of a heavy purse. But anyway, a purse motorcycle. It's not even, it's not cooling off even with the fan. The fan is only here for noise, I think. <laughs> mm. Do I have any, okay, I'll try and answer some, oh, I was going to, I'll come back to your question. We'll do a Q&A right away here, guys. I'll get into q and in, in just about five minutes. I keep sneaking them in. Um, so, G. Fixler, ask your question about the antique uh, tripping device. Do you have any? Oh, antique tripping devices. Okay, we'll, we'll try and answer some questions a little bit. Um, the Rolls-Royce. They put it up on the hoist, expecting it would need a whole bunch of work because, you know, it was eaten by rats. And... It doesn't. They said this car was really well maintained, you know, prior to the rats eating it. So um, it's actually in really good shape. They just have to replace some brake lines. But as you know, right now, shipping is really delayed. The parts that are on. Oh, Peter's on. Hey, Peter. My. Um, hey, Peter. What is Peter? He's my nephew in law. We'll just say he's our friend and nephew. <laughs> Frefew. Frefew. You're our Frefew, Peter. Or our Nend. <laughs> anyway, Peter, nice to see you. Um, so the, the car, they get it up on the hoist and they say, they call me and they said, uh, it's actually in really good shape. And so we just need some brake lines, but we're, everything's delayed with shipping right now. Parts are coming from the UK. But the reason I haven't done a video on it is that it's just nothing has happened. 
nothing's happened since the last video. It's just sitting there waiting. And it's it's all sadness right now for me because this is the type of weather you want to be driving convertible in because we only have a couple months of the year where you can get a stroke by driving across town. And this is the type of weather I want to be out in, not getting a sunstroke, but no. driving a convertible, this is the time to do it. You know, another month and it's going to be too late. So hopefully it, they get it done quickly. It takes a really high class rat to chew on a Rolls Royce. <laughs> if that rat wasn't high class before, it was high class after. They're like... What about this car? No, that car won't do. What about this car? That's the car for us. That's quality aged leather in that car. Anyway, they ate it. Um, but the car is looking good. The car is um, just about nearing completion. Once it's done at that shop, I can get the bumper fixed. Wah, wah, wah. As you know, um, the bumper got damaged while it was at the shop. So we're, uh, we have to do a little bit of repairs on it. But anyway, uh, okay, let's do... There you go. Some questions and answers now. Let's do, uh, okay, DJ Trish says, did you ever recover the stolen guitars? I did not. I'm working with my insurance on I that. I wasn't sure what you, uh, if you told people that we didn't, if we haven't heard anything. No, they, they I have not heard them. They took the fingerprints. They're, they're working on it. But um, with something like that, um, you know, if the person gets caught, they will likely go to jail. And I should clarify, when I said that I, I don't, I said on a video before, and somebody actually unsubscribed me because they're like, I can't believe you were trying to be nice to the guy that stole from you. It's not that I'm I'm not happy that somebody stole from us. Really? I just hope that as part of him getting arrested, which is probably what should happen when you break into somebody's building, yeah. that there was some kind of therapy involved to figure out what the guy's problem There's is. There's no reason to be mean to somebody yeah, that just that ends empathy. up going against our character so just because somebody does something wrong that's on them yeah you get to take responsibility for your actions and our actions are to choose that we're not going to treat somebody badly because of their poor choices yeah anyway so, so if they said unsubscribe then tough for them yeah they said i unsubbed you because i can't follow your ideals they said i'm forgiving but not that forgiving i'm like oh that that's okay not i guess not anyway so um the the guitars have not been recovered yet. Um, that may, that may uh, hopefully come back to us at some point, but we are working with our insurance company and hopefully that would get uh, resolved shortly. That said, we did uh, up the security at the store and I feel very confident that we've got a nice um, safe and locked down building now that uh, would be very difficult for somebody to replicate what they did before. So anyway, uh, let's see. What else is going on? Uh, I'm answering your questions now, so I'm reading. <laughs> Whoa, what? <laughs> uh let's see i sold the cadillac yes the truck sold today if you can believe that but i bought something something way more cool than the money went towards so it'll it, trust me when you see it you'll understand why the money went towards this other thing because it, it it made more sense um i think uh somebody asked if we do scoop ice cream it's not a big deal you just have to get your food handling and safety license i can't remember the actual term and hire another employee that yeah. has that <laughs> So. Um, okay, is the Potter's house still rented? Yes, and they said they want to rent it for another year, which is good news, so we'll have renters in there for a while. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, I'll, you'll have to see whether it's going to be an E-Type Jag or not. That'll, it'll be a surprise what I, what I got. The type of vehicle that's coming is a surprise. Uh, somebody, Kelly says, what kind of car was that small car you had? It was a favorite of yours that you regret selling. Um, probably the BMW Isetta, maybe, um, that was really cool. Oh, the I said you regret selling. Well, I'll never. No, no. I might never get another one. It's the red one. one. What the Alpha? To put the, is it the, there's been a few cars that he's had a little bit of regrets on. So. Yeah. <laughs> the the truck that I sold is the one that we did the um, Jason and I built the box on the back of. That's the one that um, that sold, and I didn't even you know the person saw it. They wanted it. They offered me a price that was over three times what I had into it. So. You know, as a business person, it's hard to say no when you need money to put into other projects or other ventures. That's so. how we buy stuff at Pigs. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I go to people's houses and I, I go to places. Remember, I went to, I don't know if you guys saw the video where I went to um, the scrapyard maybe a week or two ago and the guy had a 46 Buick. Well, I heard that A, they got it running and B, he wants to sell it to me. And the price is fair, but I just bought something that I kind of sunk some money into. So... I don't know that that'll come home, but I go out looking for antiques at people's houses and they sometimes have an old car in the garage and sometimes that car follows me home. That's what happens. Like okay. a lost little puppy dog and the headlights are the eyeballs and sometimes they pee on the floor because the oil leaks out of them. But that's why I love them so much. The old cars have to find a home for us. So, um, uh, let's see, <laughs> any bites on the old store? Uh, the old shop has not sold yet. 
Uh, we if are. If you're interested. If you're interested, come on down. Um, I'm thinking if it doesn't. Oh, it's Susie. You want to store Susie? Yeah. So we yeah. had a lease signed with our old location, um, but COVID-19 hit, and that put a, a stick in the spoke, so to speak, on that because they are. Uh, dance studio and the da dance studios are still not allowed to operate fully right now. So uh, for them and their business model, this is not an ideal time. I don't blame them. So um, they were trying to um, they were trying to make it work. And I know they invested a lot of money in trying to get a zone, but they keep the, the challenge I'm having is that they they keep saying we're going to be in there on the first, and then the, another month goes by, and another month. So now it's been like five or six months, and I feel like I've been patient enough. So I'll probably end up taking it off the market. Uh, maybe relisting with a different realtor, trying a different approach, and um, you know maybe do something creative with it. I'm a creative guy. I can think of something. Uh, the uh, there's a big antique mall in town that's closing. There's a lot of vendors who need need space to rent. I could rent it out to other vendors and make it into a little mini antique mall. You know, there's lots of stuff I could do with it other we than it just sitting anything. empty. Yeah, we could turn it into the the Axel or the I almost said Axel Toys. That was the name of our old store. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Curiosity Inc. Furniture Store, where all the big furniture goes. Like, there's so much stuff I could do with it that I'm not doing right now because we're trying to have it show ready. But as soon as we get out of that, uh, you know, lease agreement that we had with them, then we can look at other options. Uh, is there any item that Melissa can't resist? What is it? If I see something. Okay, there's a couple things actually. I was gonna say fresh fruits and vegetables. Yeah, groceries. No, no lie. Fresh. I go to a farmer's market. I have problems, you guys. I don't want anything to go to waste though. So not crazy. The other thing is, is that actual uh, homemade soap made with essential oils, lavender, not uh, fragrance oils, and not the four soap like the actual soap. Oh man, <laughs> I can't. Yeah. I obviously can't live without. Yep, and my ring. <laughs> Melissa doesn't collect a whole lot. Yeah, food apparently. She's pretty much just content if we're doing family stuff, like having good family memories, and if there's food in the pantry and in the fridge. Yeah. That's good times for Melissa. I really enjoy, you know, I, I enjoy experiences a lot. Yeah. And somebody asked how the kids were doing and everybody here. Like we've been hanging around home, of course, as, as most of us are. And I'm really lucky. Our kids get along. I enjoy spending time with our kids. Like it's just... Abigail looked really slow at me though, <laughs> but I do. It's been fun. I've been teaching them a whole bunch of new board games. So today, because we needed to get out of that heat <laughs> and I am going back to teaching in the fall. I, I mean, we don't know what fall is going to look like, but we don't start until September. Yeah. So the, um, uh, trying to answer some of the questions, uh, for you guys, um, I have, I have made a homemade ice cream once. We did it in the uh, old wooden um, the ice cream churn, and you had to like stir it for like an hour. That was with Alexander's grandpa. Yeah, we did that with. Well, it was with salt and something else, yeah. right? Yeah, I've only done that once. Um, I have a customer of mine who actually makes a uh, homemade ice cream, and he hooks up a hit and miss engine to it, like an old hundred year old hit and miss engine, and he runs and uh, makes ice cream. I should get him to come to the store. To I should do a yeah. I should I should contact him and see if he wants to do a special day, and I'll advertise it. I've know. done ice cream in Ziploc bags because I teach preschool. You better believe that happens in preschool. Uh, not not this time, but it did. <laughs> yeah, it did in the past. Uh, somebody said, "What became of the Picasso vase?" It's still sitting on their shelf. And for the record, the the Picasso vase is a real Picasso. However, it's a Picasso that Picasso. Um, he would have students and other people do work to it, and then he'd come along and sign it at the end. So it's not like he sat there and made it and did the whole thing. There was 150 that he made exactly like it, but it is a real Picasso piece, um, still fairly valuable. I have not heard back from them yet. I imagine they're probably gonna hold out and try and get their best dollar. I need to get it at a cost where I can resell it, and they probably wanna get it at the end price. So sometimes those deals don't happen, sometimes they do. Um, We'll see. Uh, so Alexander had laser eye surgery. Somebody said, why do the kids wear glasses and the parents don't? I have, don't need glasses. Alexander had glasses. He had laser eye surgery when you were. I have laser beam eyes now. And his eyes didn't go meow, down. Meow, meow, meow. They said once, meow, meow, meow. once you hit 30 that you'd need reading glasses and you never did. Did you like that sound? Should I do that? Meow, 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 meow. I'm not done with school. <laughs> uh, I'm, our school starts back up. We have summers off. Our school <clears throat> starts back up September. I start the second week in September, and our regular school starts first week of September. So, 
Um, okay. Did laser surgery hurt? No, but it was lasting in many ways. One, my eyesight is still good, but um, never knew what burning eyeball smelt like up until that point. Gross, Alexander. And you kind of get like, you know, you're breathing and they're lasering your eyeball, so you probably breathe in a bit of your own laser beamed eyeball. It was kind of gross. It was a con like if you lit a balloon on fire, that's kind of what it smelled like, like burning rubber, whatever. But this is what it's like. If you haven't been through laser eye surgery, I'll give you this <laughs> a somewhat graphic description. <laughs> okay, I'll try and keep it. I know there might be kids watching. So anyway, my eyes were okay up close, but close I, ears, I couldn't see far away. And I was really clumsy with my glasses. They'd fall or I'd put them in my pocket and I'd sit on them and bad stuff would happen to them. So um, I got laser eye surgery. This is when it first was kind of coming out. There was a new thing. So I got LASIK. I went in, um, they put drops in your eyes, you go lie down, um, they kind of clamp your eyeballs open, and um, things kind of get blurry because they lift your cornea back. There's a red light. You, just, you can't see, you're blind. It's like static television. It, that's what it looks like. You can't see a darn thing. It's like static TV. Everything's just static E and white and you can't see. Um, and then you can see red because they're laser beaming your eyeball. This um, was a while ago that he had This it. is a while ago. And then that's the moment you're like, oh, I just tasted my eyeball. That's really gross. Uh, so it stinks really bad. Um, and then they flip the thing back down. It's kind of like watching somebody squeegee the window on your car at a full serve gas station <laughs> where they're like, you know, they're doing that with the squeegee and that's what they're doing with your eyeball. You're like, oh, it's like I'm at a full serve gas station and they're squeegeeing my eyeball back together. Was so, it that bad, Alexander? No, it was, it was not that bad. Honestly, it was kind of relaxing. The worst part was just the smell. Otherwise it was fine. That's it, disgusting. I would it say- It was like instant. I thought that uh, they didn't do it yet. I, and he was like sitting in the room and he's already reading like this little, this like little box across the room, like the little printing on it. That was the best. Cause all the, the drive home, insane. she had to drive, but I was like spotting signs like way far away that even old eagle eyes here or young eagle eyes, my she eyes couldn't see. My eyes are so good now, I have to probably go get my eyes checked. But I had like super vision right out of the gate, but you have to wear yeah. these granny cataract glasses for a while, the ones that kind of come down on the sides. Why the grampy? <laughs> I don't know, grampy, fine, they're grampy glasses. They're old, they, you know, cataract glasses. That They gave you those big black sunglasses yeah. to wear and you had to wear them for like a couple days or whatever didn't care because they gave them out of them first. I look like, <laughs> From the 80s or is that Max Headroom guy? That's how I felt. Oh my gosh. Anyway, so then uh, I get my, my eyes are done. Uh, they're scratchy for like about a month after. Uh, Brickman, I see you there. He wants me to play a song. I'll think I'll do a song at some point. Um, not today, but we'll do a song and I'll put one up at some point. Um, anyway, my, my eyes were good. So a couple months later, I joined a media league softball team for a TV station because I was a producer on Canadian Idol um on the second season and i joined the softball team for the production company that did it and we were playing a game and everything was good and there's a guy there who's got glasses and he said i don't know how we got on the topic he said i had laser eye surgery and i said well when are you still wearing glasses where he said because it worked in one eye and they blinded me in the other one he's like yeah it's like 50 50 whether they get it right or not I'm like what <laughs> i it was fine for me but when he had it done they actually really screwed up and uh I guess you sign a waiver saying that, man, I'll work out. So he still had to wear glasses. He had like a Coke bottle eyeglass on one side and just clear glass on the other. So, yeah. He could get a monocle, couldn't he? Yeah. He could just... Oh, my gosh. That's what I should have recommended. He'd be the only guy that actually needed a monocle. You know, he could be the Mr. Peanut Man playing baseball. That would have been great. But, so that was, that was a little nerve-wracking. But, um, yeah. So, anyway, do I recommend it? I guess so. It worked for me, um, and I haven't needed glasses since. They say after a while you might need to go in for touch-ups, where they go and I guess zap you again. We can haven't all, needed that so far though. Um, we can all sing along. Hold on. Somebody said to get a mini donut truck for the patio, but mm. if it's if it's Probably like a mini truck, how would we fit inside of it? Our neighbors actually have a mini donut truck. Oh, is that who said it? Yeah, I don't no, know. No, no, wait. Our neighbors have a mini donut I, truck. You know, it's funny. I don't know what our neighbor's last name is. So they have a they have yeah. a donut truck called um, Jackie O's. O's Donuts, and they it's um, they have wide white walls on a this food could, truck. This could actually happen in reality. All we got to do is walk five houses down on that side, and knock on their door, and be like, "Hey, you want to come sell some mini donuts at our no, store?" No, Chewy. Oh, Nobody's now the dog here. the dog thinks it's there's like, somebody at the door. It's like a red food truck with 
uh, white polka dots with like a... Wide white wall tires. Yeah. And it's her with the Jackie O sunglasses yeah. and a kerchief. Anyway, they're fun Pretty people. Awesome. We know some interesting people. We yeah. know we have beekeepers that are friends. We got people that make hot sauces for a living. We've got people who do all kinds of fun stuff. Yep. You know, I have to say the one thing that I like about having this store versus our other location is that we've branched off into supporting a lot of other local businesses. It was meant to be. It was meant to be. Yeah. And the general store, I've said it before, but a store tells you what it wants to be. And we've had a ton of people coming in, children in the neighborhood happy, think, walking around thinking the store is cool, kids playing pinball machines, uh, candy going in and out of the door. And we have a senior's home a couple doors down from us. So not only do I have the neighborhood kids coming in, but today I had a couple of very nice little ladies come through with their walkers. And what were they after? The candy counter. <laughs> so every once in a while, the, the ladies from the seniors lodge come over with their walkers. I kid you not. And they load up on candy like their kids again. It just makes that me happy. That candy counter is getting a little crazy. I saw it. I like to make go, people happy. Oh my gosh. I like to give the people what they Our want. Our kids walked in and their eyes went so big. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do anything halfway. No. You know, we have we have a pretty good uh, we have a pretty good variety of candy at the counter there. Did you show dad? So Oh yeah. Um, so it's it's been busy all around for the whole family. We've been uh, doing the candies, uh, getting the store ready, getting ready to build a new store. Uh, and Steven, our son, uh, was on a video here the other day. Uh, he helped me unpack some stuff that came in, but it, he also just posted a video today as well. So if you've not been on Steven's channel, it was our eldest son. I think, what did he paint? Was it a skull today that he did the drawing yeah, of? Yeah, it was really awesome, actually. Oh, yeah. Maybe, can I no, show no, it? you can't show the finished product on the Okay, I can't. It's on the table for some it's reason. On, his drawing is on our table right now. What's really cool, though, Steven is starting to get actual commissions for artwork. Yeah. Because he does these beautiful little pictures custom for people, like if they want their cat or their dog, whatever. I think he charges like $80 or something. And then he sends off an original Steven. And he is saving right now to try and buy his first car. So I think every dollar that kid gets is going in his uh, bank account to try and save up for his first Steven mobile. So if you haven't checked out Steven's channel, go, Steven draws. go subscribe. It's Steven Draws. Oh, S Matthew just put it up. Uh, S-T-E-P-H-E-N Draws. Steven Draws. Thank you, Matthew. Um, and, uh, oh, Matthew says, I teach art. Your son has ability. You know, I think so, too. He's always been a talented little artist. It always amazes me. I am not a talented little artist. It amazes me that he starts out with something like, you know, your very basic sketch and he keeps building on it and building on it. Just from where it starts to where it ends, like from where it starts is maybe where I could get to. Where it ends is like, the, hey, Steven, you want to show the picture on it or do you want them to have to watch to see it? Well, I have a really good picture on my YouTube channel. So yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Steven wants you to go to his YouTube channel to see what he drew. Anyway, ah, whatever. he's been getting very, very creative. You know, the, no, no, you don't have to show it. We'll leave it a surprise. Um, really cool posters for concerts or something. Anyway, he's, uh, he's got some real talent, so we're trying to guide him into uh, what the next course of action for university will be, but we'll see. It's not, uh, what's coming from Tennessee is not for Steven. <laughs> no. Well, he'll be able to be in it. What's Wait, is it the... No, no don't say. Oh, oh, oh. oh I said it. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. No, you can't say. <laughs> that would have been bad. Uh, Our whole family does it. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting warm. <laughs> so, yeah, the... Um, no, well, we're going to try and go out Stephen car shopping at some point. He turns 16 in January. Nah, no, it grows. Okay, we'll try and reconnect. Okay, are we back? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Good golly. Um, there we go. We're back now. I don't now. know why. <laughs> Sometimes the uh, video quality when we're doing a live feed isn't that great. I so. even reset the whole router and everything thinking, mm, I'm so smart. Oh, there's probably... No, nah, it doesn't look stormy. It just looks Yeah. Dark. Okay. So the last uh, 10 minutes or so, we're going to do nothing but Q&A. So this is your time right now, guys. Um, so let's, uh, let's pop it up there. Let's answer some questions. If you have any questions or want to chat with us, this is the time to do it. Matthew, you're right. Oh, what Steam type of car does Stephen want? Stephen, I think, wants um, I, like a fun... He likes classic cars. He really likes my Buick. But we need to get him something that would be good in winter. So we'll, we'll have to look through cars and go test check some out. But we'll be looking for a cool first Stephen mobile pretty soon. But he's saving mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. Uh, is the beef jerky local? Yes, the beef jerky that I sell at the store is locally made. It's... Um, they're... Edmonton uh, based. They're the same people that actually make the fudge. Luckily, Do you expect the addition to take months or years. I, 
<laughs> I was going to say they don't have jerky flavored fudge or fudge flavored yeah. jerky. That would be a bad combination. Um, the uh, addition, it will not be years. It will happen in the most timely manner it can happen. There's no way Alexander could wait years. If you guys not met me, I like to get stuff done. I want to get that thing uh, up and built this year. And uh, the only thing that's going to slow me down would be other people's schedules if we can't book the concrete uh, pour before winter. But I'm trying to get that all sorted out. Uh, so Alexandria said, am I going to use all the supplies I got from Bob's mom? Well, I will eventually get to all of them after I was done, like, celebrating and, like... <laughs> uh, somebody says, is there a motel near you guys? Well, we're very close to downtown, and there's many hotels in the downtown area, which are a short Uber or um, they have those little electric scooter bike things now. Don't recommend that in winter. That'd be maybe kind of treacherous, but... Uh, we're very close to downtown, and there's lots of hotels and, and stuff in our downtown area. Um, Hello. Let's see. Uh, any idea when the border will open? Mm, well, we we don't have an idea. It's still closed for at least another month. I think they won't reopen the border anytime soon, sadly, because uh, they're waiting for the cases to drop, and ours are starting to climb a little bit here again. In fact, um, a lot of people watching the videos have said, um, are masks mandatory? Are they mandatory? They've not been mandatory. As of August 1st, they will be mandatory yep. in uh, public spaces, including retail settings. So um, when I'm at the store going forward, I may have masks on. Um, so there we go. Did you just say may have? Because <coughs> we know mandatory means No, but if I'm, if I'm by myself and I'm doing a video, I oh, will have I a see. mask on. But if there's customers in there, I will. Oh, just, uh, anyway. Just making sure. Yeah. So let's answer <laughs> some more questions. Did you, sell, did you sell all the puzzles, Alex? The puzzles all sold to a dealer friend of mine named Dwayne. Um, and if you uh, need to buy a puzzle from him, you can uh, reach out to me and I'll get you his contact. I think he sold a lot of that stuff already. A lot of times when you see me buy an entire garage or you see me buy an entire collection of something, I have uh, multiple people that I know in my network that are other dealers and I will wholesale out the stuff that I don't want for the store. So I will keep the things that I think are, you know, really cool or add some interest to the store or that I can decorate nicely with, like the folding cameras and that. The rest of the stuff all goes. And it gets me a chunk of my money back right away. They get some stock that they can sell at their antique booths, at the antique malls and so forth. And, um, you know, we get our stuff cleared out. I don't want to get into a situation where I'm having to... Uh, rent a storage unit or storage locker. So um, I like to get rid of stuff as quickly as I can. I don't think we would can. do that anyways. We would not, even though we have an empty warehouse we're paying for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I think once you hit a warehouse stage, that means you are you have to re-evaluate what you're doing. Uh, do people just call you up to come picking by word of mouth? Um, they stop in the store. They call me on the phone. Um, sometimes it's word of mouth. I had, I'm going to uh, someone's house tomorrow morning and they were in the store today and they live in my area and they invited me over to their house to come and see what they have. And from the sounds of things, they have quite a cool collection of stuff. So we'll see. We brought, uh, so um, we brought Josh's painting and we put it in the store. It's not for sale. The one of, uh, from Well, Mary. the painting of Mary is not for sale, no. but Josh does have paintings in my store, which are for yeah. sale. Yeah. But she was specifically asking about that painting. Um, have, did they tell you why it's not selling? The reason that our other store is not selling right now is that we are in the middle of a pandemic and there's a lot of businesses that have closed recently. Um, the retail market, uh, the, the commercial retail market is kind of flooded right now. And so uh, there's a lot for sale. So um, it's not a really great time to sell. We did lower the price, uh, but I, we can't lower it anymore because we wouldn't even get our money back. So um, we're gonna hang on to it and either use it for storage or use it for something. We'll find a use for it. So for my garden, it's gotten a little crazy back there. And uh, I do have tomatoes, but they're all green right now. I'm surprised that, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised, but all of them came from literally a tomato that my grandma like opened up and most of them, some of them were from me opening up a tomato and just doing it that way. That takes a long time to grow. <laughs> uh, Vera says, how is the cobra? Um, well, I, I'm not sure Vera if you saw, but we decided um, that I needed the space in the garage and we were going to advertise the car for sale. We did. And I thought instead of trying to list this old Mustang and trying to find a buyer for it, we ended up uh, advertising it and saying we will give it away for free if it goes to a parent and their kid who are going to work on it together. And so we had uh, a dad and his son showed up and we would have been happy to go to a mother and daughter or a mother and son or a father and daughter. Yeah. It didn't matter. Just but had to have a child the people that showed up was a father and son. <laughs> And um, they are working on the car right now. They sent me a video not that long ago that they got the car running and idling properly. If you saw me 
um, trying to drive the Mustang and people were like, Alex must not know how to drive a standard. That wasn't the problem. The problem was the car was running um, with a uh, poor carburetor and it was stalling. So I had to keep the idle, I had to keep revving it. Otherwise it was stalling. But they got it running uh, and driving fine now. It's idling and running under its own power. I think they're fixing the brakes. So it is actually a driving vehicle now. It just looks hideous. I think they're gonna do the work to it or turn it into a race car or something. But anyway. Uh, it's a, somebody asked and then the, th the sh feed shifted. Uh, have our, oh no, it's right there, Justin. Have your online sales gone down recently? But we don't really, a, a lot of people ask us, why don't you list uh, or list all your items online? And the simple answer to that is that it's very time consuming to list every, we have a lot of items in the store. Um, and what we do sell, um, sell, generally we sell a lot of stuff very fast. So for those of you that um, have been in the store, they watch a video. If you don't come in kind of like or call the day of or the next day, sometimes things sell really quickly. And um, I apologize to those people that call a couple days later or maybe I didn't get their message and they find out the thing they were after has sold. We sell stuff pretty fast. And if something sits around for a long time, we take it to auction. We deal with Kastner auctions to uh, unload a whole bunch of stuff. Pretty much every week I take stuff down to auction. So I walk around the store, the excess items that aren't selling or things that came with the collection that I didn't want, they go to auction. Yeah. Uh, I still have the Mrs. Beasley doll though. So Trace, if you want that, you can email me later and we can get that mailed out to you. Um, so uh, I tried doing an add to cart website before, but the, the amount of time that it took to post the pictures and add it to the website, it would take probably about 20, 25 minutes to add a video. Uh, you can turn the fan back on, honey. It's really, Abby will turn the fan off, but it's, it's really warm in here. <laughs> so, um, can you put it on a swivel though? She's, okay. she's got it. No, she'll okay. figure it out. Um, yeah, the, uh, the time invested just wasn't really Even the it. expensive items. It's as soon as somebody sees something online or if we, if we end up doing a trade for something, it doesn't make sense. Along with, um, all the emails and regular day life, yeah. it would be crazy. Um, okay. There are, um, let's see, do uh, do you all come to the U.S. Uh, to look over states before you go to auction? In other words, you get first choice. I don't go to the United States that often, especially now I can't. Um, I don't have the same kind of connections there that I do here. Where we buy our product, um, I don't go to estate sales or garage sales or auctions. Where I like to go, um, where I like to go is um, to someone's house before they've decided to do a garage sale, before they've decided to go uh, have an estate sale because by the time that happens, it's typically too late. So the calls I typically get are the moment that somebody realizes that they have to downsize or the moment that somebody may have passed on and they have a big collection to deal with, that's where I like to step in uh, and we'll go and visit. I'll have first, first choice to look at what's there and yes, you get first pick on whatever. And you literally go around like on American Pickers or any of those TV shows uh, or our show for that matter and dig through their basements and dig through their barns and dig through their attics and you get to find those hidden treasures. I put it all in a big pile and then we try and make an offer. So um, if you've ever watched the American Picker Show, um, Frank always does his bundling and that's the way anybody in this business should probably be buying anything. You get a much better deal when you're buying in bulk. When you start p paying for things by the each, you know, you start figuring out X amount of dollars for that, X amount for that. Um, it really starts to add up. So the best case scenario that you can do is to put things together in a big pile, um, give them an estimate of what the retail would be on it and then make an offer. And typically you get your best deal that way. So that's sometimes how I end up with these giant collections is that I buy everything, even if I don't want it all, because I know that it'll balance itself out once I get rid of the stuff I don't want, whether it's auction or otherwise, I'll be left with the good stuff and we'll make the profit off of that. Does JFK campaign stuff sell in Canada? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a an, large banner in a frame from before uh, he was president. There was an awful lot of um, JFK merchandise, let's say, out there. But campaign buttons are collectible, yes. Life magazines, not so much. Um, newspapers from the time that he passed um, are collectible. Uh, you know, it all depends. You know, surprisingly, there are a lot of people who do collect certain things from American presidents, even in Canada. Uh, it, you know, it just depends on, um, you know, what what the interest is or if it has historical significance. Uh, okay, we'll try and answer some more questions here. And then we'll, we'll log off in just Did a little bit. Know? So we'll answer a couple more questions, then we'll call it a night. Did uh, you know you'd end up with the, 
as the wife of a part-time werewolf, because I said you must be part werewolf because of how fast oh. your hair grows with laser eyes. No, I didn't, but lucky me. I believe that my, my beard grows into a natural Van Dyke, <laughs> which is what that beard is called. That's what my dad had. He had that Van Dyke kind of beard. You know, like like a like a college professor, but not but one that teaches like arts or like abstract thought or something. Not a normal college professor. <laughs> oh, Frederick. Yeah. Fred. I wonder if you go by Frederick or Fred. Any but either way, uh, I look forward to your comments. He said, "Does the YouTube channel help you get through tough times?" Yeah, it does, <laughs> because not only do we get to stay a community and remember that we're all in this together, but YouTube is still. Uh, form of income as well. So even if everything were uh, to close down, as long as that doesn't include YouTube, we still have a form of something to pay the bills. So. Yeah, it was a little trickier when we were put in quarantine because I had to find stuff around the house to fix up. So if you're yeah. watching those videos from when we were in quarantine, um, I am restoring random toy motorcycles and trying to fix stuff up. And I think I repaired some clocks that I had around here. Um, I did whatever I could to keep busy because I was stuck indoors for over all 14 but, days. Basically, no, then I had two rounds. Oh, there. yeah, right. I right. was indoors for a month because then I got the test and then you had to be quarantined. Yeah, I was indoors for a month, so I was still putting out videos, but it was a little more challenging. And I think I said at that time that I was getting nervous because we were busy selling stuff at auction and our store was getting thinner, but I wasn't going out to buy things like I am right now. So um, you know, we're definitely back at it. Uh, Sarge in Red's Vintage Toys says, I don't watch TV anymore. YouTubers like you are the way to go. Oh, thanks very much. I don't know if you're Sarge or if you're Red, but, uh, or maybe you're Red Sarge. Have you ever bought anything bad? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it depends on what he means by bad. Mm, I, okay, my friend Dwayne used to do storage lockers. I'm not going to share the entire story, but he bought a storage unit and it looked like a bunch of boxes. He moved the empty boxes out of the way. It was just a bunch of, like, rocks. And not even, like... They weren't even good landscape rocks. It was just like boulders that somebody probably cleared out of their farm field or something. Why would you spend money on a storage locker? Uh, maybe somebody was probably planning on doing some kind of landscaping with it and never did. But he said that he bought the storage unit for like, you know, $350. And it took him an entire day or two of hauling rocks. And he said that was like the last time he ever wanted to do a storage locker. A lot of times when you see storage locker videos, they're not what you see on TV. Um, you know, we did one storage locker and it was just some boring kind of kitchen stuff. Um, you know, it wasn't overly exciting. That's not generally what we like to get into anyways. Yeah, but it, it kind of feels sad. I mean, I, I don't mean to slight it because people make a good living off of that. Maybe we'll do that again uh, down the road, but, but it, it always feels sad. Because I've had family that um, wasn't able to pay their storage locker and then they lost everything. So I, I see the people behind it. Not just people that decided one day not to pay their bill, but people that are hurting. So I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to be a part of their hurting. I feel like people who buy storage lockers are people who play slot machines at casino. They tell you about the time that they won, but they never tell you about the hundred times that they lost. You always hear like, yeah, I bought this locker and it was full of solid gold bars. And you're like, well, what about all the other ones? Well, we'll talk about that. You know, it's, they're all full of rocks or something horrible. Like... You know, somebody's garbage. That was it. the other thing Dwayne said, that he bought one unit was nothing but rocks, and that was like back-breaking labor for an entire day, and he made no money off it. The other one was lots of boxes, and the lady was like collecting gum wrappers she found off the sidewalk and old, not even old bottles, like it was just garbage. She was taking garbage and putting it in a locker. Like she probably had some kind of uh, challenge with collecting, let's say, um, but it, I think it was like a, a hoarder locker, and he was very disappointed because there wasn't even one single good thing in there. So, Dwayne, if you're watching this, <laughs> now, see, now the whole world knows why you and I don't do a whole lot of storage lockers. A lot of times, it's just not that great. Um, I get to go to people's houses and pick out all the cool stuff, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, um, guys, thank you so much. It's been a long live feed today. Thank you so much for all the super chats. Um, please go and check out our son Steven's channel at Steven Draws. Um, if you want to have something drawn by Steven, if you want something custom made, you can reach out to him through his channel and he'll uh, he'll do uh, artwork for you. Um, but please, more than that, uh, go check out his channel, subscribe to it. And uh, he makes a little bit of income from YouTube on that. And he is saving up for his first car. So let's see if we can get him uh, a foot in the right direction. And, He's been uh, pretty responsible in that too, where I've given him options to buy different things. I can't remember what it was. And he's like, no, mom, I'm saving for a car. Yeah, he's been saving but for a while. He'll be linking uh, email. So Stephen, come over here and tell us what type of car you want to get. Steven is now approaching from behind. It's really warm outside. You gotta get your head okay, in. Oh, that's I, the camera. 
Um, I'm, I really like my dad's Buick. I'm not really sure. I was going to get a motorcycle, but I need something for winter as well. Yeah, probably like a little four-wheel drive, something or other. Or, yeah. what, what do you think of Jeeps? Oh, I like those. Maybe a Jeep? That would be cool. Like an old army Jeep, like Sarge off of, toy, off yeah. of cars? <laughs> yeah, winter? That would, that would be interesting driving to school in. I guess you probably don't want to be driving around a possessed car anyway. The Disney cars are like one sneeze away from being Christine. Like they're already talking and driving around under their own power. They're not running people over. <laughs> oh, I went there. They are and the people. They are. The, I know they are the people. But normally if you have a talking, driving car, it's a horror movie, according to Stephen King. But we'll, yeah, we can go. There's Jeeps. Yeah. yeah okay. Jeeps are cool. Uh, maybe we'll get a good deal. Then they'll call us a Jeepskate. Wah, da, ba, da, ba, wah. And that bombshell, wow. folks, we're going to call it a night. Check out Steven's channel. Subscribe. Subscribe to this channel, too, because if you're missing these live feeds, um, well, you're missing out on some fun. You're missing out on some chats. And um, you have to subscribe and then hit the little bell, which is an option. So the bell is lit up, and that way you'll get notified when we're doing the live. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you all soon. If you're in Edmonton, come check us out. If you're in Edmonton after August 1st, bring your mask with you. Uh, but have a wonderful evening. Stay safe, everyone. And uh, bye for now. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.